All right, so continuing on with our CRUD application, we're able to list out our posts now. And at this point, we want to be able to create a new post. So we're here in the list view. So if we jump back into STS here and we look at our list, I have a link down here that will add new post. And it's simply going to go to the request mapping of admin slash posts slash create. So let's go ahead and get started and create that one first. So let's come back into our admin post controller. And again, we're going to do a request mapping for admin post create. And we're going to say that this is going to be called create. And we'll need a model here. And in this case, we're going to return the, oh, what is this one? This was admin post, post form. So I have a post form, which is going to contain all of the, the, the form to create and edit a post. We're going we're gonna to reuse the same form in this example for both the create and the edit. Um, there, there may be times when that won't work, but in this particular case, it's a pretty simple example. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, in this case, we're creating. So what we need to do is push down to our view a couple of things. And this will make a little bit more sense when we get into here. But first thing we're going to do is add a post. So obviously, we need a post object. In this case, we're just creating a new one. So all we want is an empty post. So we're just going to instantiate a new post by saying new post. So that's good for that. <clears throat> now, when we create a new post, we need to assign an author to this post. And so to do that, I've brought in our author service. We are auto wiring our auto service into our admin post controller. And what we're going to do is use that to get a list of authors. And then we'll loop over all of our authors and display them in a select box so that when you're creating a post, you can select an author to assign to it. So we're going to go ahead and add an attribute called authors. This is a list of authors, remember. And we're going to say author service dot list. Now, obviously, um, in a real world example, you may do something like uh, in the author service, create uh, another method for like, say, hey, give me all the authors, uh, order by this, where active is true. Maybe we have inactive authors. But in this just simple example, we're going to list out five authors, I think, or four and we'll just display them. So I'm going to save that and fire this back up. And let's go ahead and jump into the post form. So let's look at the post form here. And before we do that, I'm going to jump back over to the browser. And I will include the documentation for Timeleaf here. But there's a ton of great documentation when you start getting into creating and handling forms and validation and error messages. So I'll link to this, but we're just going to run through this quickly. So we have a form here and we have an object. So this is basically our bean. In this case, that object that we're pushing down using the model is post. And then we're going to have an action and we're going to send it to admin post save. So when we submit this form, that's where it's going to go, and it's going to use a method of post. Um, so really, we're just outputting all of our post fields here, post properties. The only difference this one is um, this one's a hidden field, and it's really just going to contain the ID. When we're creating a new one, that's obviously just going to be empty, and one will get created for us um, on, the, on the server side. So then we have things like a title, and we just have a form control here. Again, th field is another new kind of uh, timely thing that we're introducing here. 
And so if you look down here, um, here's a new attribute called TH field. This is a very important feature of Spring MVC integration because it does all of the heavy work of binding your input with a property in the form backing bean. So in our case, our bean is post, and as long as we use the exact property that belongs to our post, in this case title, um, it's gonna handle all of that stuff for us. So it's gonna go ahead and output that value for us. When we load a new one, that value is gonna be empty. But when we edit a current one, an existing record, it'll output that current value for us. So here we go, we have our slug, we have our posted on date, we have our keywords, active, author. So let's look at author. So again, I said that we had a list of authors. So we just have a select box here, or a drop down menu here. We have one option to say, go ahead and select an author. And then we're just looping over that list of authors. The value is the ID of the author because that's what we store in the table. And then the text, we're just outputting the first name, space, last name. So nothing crazy there. We have our teaser, body, and a submit button. So let's go ahead and look at how this works. Let's jump back to the browser. And I'm going to probably have to reload this. Yep. So I'm going to log in as admin. So now we're on this list page. And let's go ahead and click on Add New. So now we get to this nice form. And what we can do is we can go ahead and fill this out. So let's say Dan test, test. Let's say the 19th. Uh, keywords in my case is just a simple list. So I can say one, two, three. Uh, we want this to be active. Dan, teaser text, body text. And let's go ahead and hit submit. Okay, so we have a bad input here. Okay, uh, actually we don't have a bad input here. This just threw me off, but um, okay, what's going on here is we're posting the form to our save method and we don't have one yet. So it looks like we need to go ahead and create that. So let's jump back to the editor and let's create our save method. So this is going to be request mapping admin post save now the only difference here is this is going to be a this, so by default this is get right when we just give it a a string it it thinks that by default the request method is going to be a get so we need to explicitly say that this method is going to be a request method dot post so that looks good. So now we need a save method and it's going to take a post. And what it's going to do is we're going to get back. So we're going to call our post service dot save post. And the nice thing about that is um, so that save is built into the repository already. I just created a simple method here in our post service that calls the post repository dot save. So, you know, those basic functions are already taken care of, taken care of for us. So we don't really have to do anything there. Finally, we need to figure out where to send them back. So what I want to do when we save them is just send them back to the uh, show page. Uh, so what we'll do is say redirect to admin slash post and the reason we got our saved post back is so we know what um, particular post we need to send them back to so that looks like it should work let me fire it up and we'll talk through it again so again we have a value of admin post saved that's what we're going to send to the request method is post so our form is going to post to this particular method 
this method is going to take a post and that's how um, that's where the, the data binding happens and then we have that post object that we send to our post service to save we redirect back to the show page to kind of show the user that we have indeed saved that post so let's go back to admin slash posts I uh, should do a focus there but it's all right so we're gonna add new Dan test test one two three we'll make that active Dan test test save okay so I made a little mistake there um, let's take a look at this and it looks like we have a bad URL there let's go ahead and refresh this all right let's try this one last time okay so now we've been taken to slash admin slash post slash three and so what we're seeing here is our newly created post so if we go back to the post list now we can see all three of them and the new one was Dan test so we could even go in and view it again if we want to so we ran into a couple errors but we saw how to fix them uh, that, that was pretty easy to fix to walk through um, so this is a good case. Let's go ahead and stop here, but this is a good scenario. So in this case, we were able to create a new post, but I know most of you are out there thinking, well, what we did was a perfect scenario, right? One thing we always have to be guarded against, especially in form submissions, is user error. And in this case, we were able to fill out that form, but what happens if I go in and and I, I, I don't know, maybe I just leave this form blank and I hit submit. Of course we're going to get an error because there are validation errors there. We can't submit with empty things like no posted on date, no title, no body. So in the next lecture, we're going to look at creating some validation for this particular form.